black and damp earth under the nail. Interesting. Tooth marks, rather deep ones. I'd say of incisors and a canine. Fragments of skin, a phalanx. This finger wasn't cut off, it was ripped off. I must compare the samples of earth that I found. Bite marks on this severed finger. I am afraid of the significance. The thieves didn't get what they wanted. When they were faced with the bishop's refusal to cooperate, one of the gang shook his finger at him to indicate that he was responsible for his unfortunate state. And the poor man, whose head was the only part of him not bound by ropes, bit the finger violently enough to sever it. An uncommonly savage act. Watson, I am certain that when we have explained the reasons behind this sudden bestiality, we will have revealed a larger part of the mystery. I must compare the samples of earth that I found. And if I mixed this earth with another substance, now it must all be stirred. The samples of earth taken from beneath the fingernail and from the ropes originate from the same place. How do you know? It took just a little water to analyze the consistency. The soil has retained its moisture, even though there hasn't been rain in London for over a week. This soil could come from the bank of a river or somewhere where the evaporation is slower. A mine, perhaps, or a trench. The banks of the Thames are clay soil, unlike our samples, so we can rule that out. The nearest mines are a dozen miles away, so I would rule that out also. I would therefore conclude your last theory to be nearer the mark. A trench? A pit. Watson, bring me your register of the London hospitals. Studying the scalpel has given you an idea, then? Indeed. I'll get it. Read the paper, Holmes. And this is how my dear friend and colleague treats his client's letters. Hospitals and dispensaries in London. I have found my book, Holmes. Good. Now put it on the work table, will you? Here is the section showing Whitechapel. I made several notations on these pages during our investigation into the Ripper, which might prove useful. All we need to do is to find a hospital or a public dispensary near a location where pits have been dug and black granite has been used. It's simplicity itself. I haven't finished my analysis. I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. Now I can make the right decision. I haven't finished my analysis.
I can analyze the chemical composition of a substance here. I haven't finished my analysis. I can analyze the chem... Poison, and apparently very virulent. Poison, discreet, efficient, and only detectable via a thorough post-mortem. Have you been able to isolate the active components, Holmes? Not with any certainty. This toxic substance surpasses my own knowledge in the field. It is without doubt the work of an expert chemist. A chemist and a criminal. As you say, please find my monograph on poisoners of the last 30 years. General practitioner? That won't be of any use to me. Female anatomy. Hmm. I should put this book somewhere else. According to these documents, Hans Schielmann, known as the Rat Killer, was considered the greatest specialist in chemical poison in the world. Is he at liberty? Happily, no. He has been held in the high security wing of London's Westgate prison for many years now. Then he cannot be the one who concocted the poison. Don't dismiss him too quickly, Watson. According to Scotland Yard, the man is exceptionally intelligent. For the greatest criminals, prison is but a mere obstacle. Let's plan a little visit to see Mr. Shieldman tomorrow. I haven't finished my analysis. <laughs> 